why did you decide to move to another country? I was on a break after my last venture and I was dabbling around consulting and side hustles. So you have decided to prepare your application by yourself? To the government of UK that this person has done this in the past and I trust this person will do something great in the future. Welcome to Welcome Tech tel uh, channel. Today we have Achil. He will uh, tell a very interesting story about how he got a global talent visa in two months. Hi, hi Elizabeth. Yeah. Yeah. So I will ask you a couple of questions. Let's start with uh, something like quite basic is why did you decide to move to another country, right? And why did you choose to apply for a global talent visa? First of all, yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> so just to give a quick uh, context, uh, you know, I've run startups in the past and I've been working for product-led companies, mostly into the sales and strategy, but I had a degree in engineering. So that's a quick background about me. But with respect to your question, uh, I was on a break after my last venture and I was dabbling around consulting and side hustles. Uh, and I was super passionate about sustainability and wanted to solve some problems in this sector. Hence, mm -hmm. UK and EU was my top pick. It was also the only place on the planet which is in between US and Asia. So I thought, okay, why not? Uh, and I was fortunate enough to get into Antler VC, uh, where our ideas get incubated. And they sort of recommended me to apply for global talent. And that's when I was aware of, okay, there's an interesting visa. And this is the only visa which is needed for almost everything. So hence, that's how I got to know about the visa and, and I applied for it. Yeah, this visa actually gives you lots of interesting opportunities. So you are not like tied to the employer or like to like a particular business. So I think it's quite an interesting thing to do. So you have decided to prepare your application by yourself. Please uh, tell me now about uh, what timelines did you have for your application and how and what was your process of like um, deciding whether you will do it yourself or with an agency and how do you prepare your documents? I had very short timeline, I would say like, you know, two months, around two months, like yeah, uh, nine weeks, I would say to be precise. So uh, I started my application end of August and I reached out to agencies because I had no idea about this visa and uh, uh, the processes are super complicated. You know, so many documents are needed. Uh, you need a proper statement of purpose. So mm -hmm. I had no idea where to start from. I was super overwhelmed after reading the guide on the website. I did reach out to multiple agencies, watched a lot of YouTube videos of people who, who have sort of been there, done that. But unfortunately, when I reached out to them, based on my timeline, nobody could commit because uh, agencies sort of promise 100% conversion and it takes time. And I've known people, like when I spoke to people who have got it, they took like around 18 to 20 months just with the application and, <laughs> and applying. So uh, I was very, very nervous and I had no idea how should I do. But the last shot was, okay, let me reach out to Alan's uh, and people who, who have got the visa and hopefully they will help me navigate through the process. But they did, like they did spend 15, 20 minutes and I think I had the right question so that, you know, it was super helpful for them to answer those questions and for me also to navigate through the whole process. So you only had like nine weeks uh, to do your application. So, and you have started to prepare it by yourself, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and what evidence of your talent have you provided? So I did start multiple companies in the past and I did raise venture capital money. So those were one of the evidences. Mm -hmm. Along with that, uh, I was speaking at some high profile events and big conferences. So that was building in more credibility. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one, one, one of the insight I got from the alum was that these evidences want us to seem more credible and it should be tied up to our statement of purpose the storytelling was okay this is what i have done in the past 
one event led to the other and other event led to the other and that's why i want to move to this country and evidences were all connecting like starting up a company later on getting a small exit uh, raising venture capital money then going on to work for a corporate for product led corporate company having opportunity to speak to various people across various events so those were my major evidences also i think a uh, letter of recommendations are really powerful especially if the letter of recommendation is from somebody who's of high profile who recommends you for the visa yeah i totally agree with all the statements that you have provided actually so yeah firstly about the personal statements is a, a genius insight so yeah uh, everything uh, your personal statements should like sum up everything that you have done in the past and like provide like the potential of, of for the future that's what I think usually. And yeah, I agree with the recommendation letters totally. Yeah, the, the, the higher the profile of the person who recommends you, the higher the chance for you to get a visa. So the networking here is quite important. Have you uh, succeed preparing your application and getting the visa in uh, nine weeks? And how did you do that? Like I said, I reached out to the alums and mm -hmm. uh, they gave me strategies uh, on... Uh, and in, I'm just happy to share the strategy. It's quite simple. It's like, so first, it's your statement of purpose. Have a strong story, what you have done in the past, what you're doing, and what you want want, want to do, and why do you want to move to the UK. Now, once the story is set, now the evidences should back up those stories, like on the past. Obviously, you can't back up the future. It's the past. And the letter of recommendation is backing up your past and connecting your future, saying that, uh, you know, the credible people from the industry are recommending you to the government of UK that this person has done this in the past and I trust this person will do something great in the future. That was the framework. So all my storytelling and, uh, you know, the statement of purpose. I think statement of purpose is the most important thing. Once we get that sorted, along with the ev evidences, uh, it should be super easy for the evaluator to read and understand ra rather than complicating so mm -hmm. i did apply these strategies it did take time uh i mean i think uh for preparing the application letter of collecting the letter of recommendations also picking the relevant evidences right sometimes we might have so many evidences but based on the the visa guide there are certain exact criteria so it's, it's good to read whether it is innovate or whether it's impact so give the relevant evidence based on the keyword and yeah, build the whole, whole profile. So I think for me, uh, collecting all the documents and building the story, it took around uh, two weeks. It's uh, and following up with various stakeholders for the you know, letter of recommendations and pulling out evidences from the credible party. Two weeks for the whole building application yeah two weeks for building application yeah well i think it's quite a possible thing but yeah you have done a great work actually on doing it in two weeks then you have applied uh like on stage two technician and how long did it uh did the the process take right the the, the rest of the process and do you know maybe some life hacks of how to get the visa faster so i took a gamble there uh traditionally i think people sort of apply for stage one get the result and apply for stage two. I did both in parallel. So I just <laughs> applied for the endorsement first and parallelly I, I applied for my stage two. That's for the biometric as such. And my, I sent my passport so mm -hmm. that they can seal and send back. Uh, so hence, I think that that was the hack and the gamble because I wasn't exactly sure was I supposed to do that? Uh, but uh, I did it. Uh, and somehow, uh, I think once I got the endorsement letter, the confirmation, I think the next day I got an email that, you know, the stage two is also get, getting processed and within two days I'm getting my passport. So I was like, okay, that's great. So I didn't have to wait for the whole period. <laughs> I don't know whether it's legally or legitimately possible, but uh, uh I just took a gamble and it sort of worked for me, yeah. Yeah, well, this is kind of possible, actually. But I yeah. don't see people that do this a lot. But if you maybe also need to get your visa very fast, like in, in uh, nine weeks, you can use this hack, maybe. So maybe you could uh, share uh, with us uh, like uh, some pros and cons of your life in London. What would have surprised 
you there and so on uh, you know uh, the interesting part i would say is that uh, people are super warm this is the pro like you know the people so i stay or i live around central and east london so people are super warm and there's a sense of community and belonging once we get along with the right people and it, it was super surprising for me like i just go to a pub and i'm just sitting there and i'm not alone just people just join in they ask how how was your day i say it's a bad day and they they share why they, their day was even more worse so you know you're somehow <laughs> connecting and it, it's so fun and that was super surprising for me but also you know uh, that there's so much community things happening like i'm more into personal development so i'm part of some personal development community uh, also a uh, nerd of architecture and historical stuff and that's why i think london is amazing it's like your time traveling certain streets are like you are in 1600s and suddenly you're back to 22 and 1600s 2022 so uh yeah, it was pretty amazing uh the con i would say you know the winters are really cold uh so people who are not used to cold weather might be new because i am not used to super cold weather and this is something interesting uh for me and uh, it's sort of expensive so if you don't have a proper uh lifestyle i would say uh you can still survive but if you want to have a fulfilled a complete london life uh it's better if you have a better income or higher income to survive here. yeah but i i actually think that usually people like who live in london uk and work there uh, and have same jobs as people like from other countries uh right uh, usually people in london they have a higher income in general so you so yeah it, everything is more expensive there but usually the, the income is uh, like higher on average i think absolutely so uh there are so much job opportunities and uh, high paying jobs as well so uh, as you right, right, rightly mentioned it's the cost of living uh, as such but somebody who's move, move, moving in from a different country for the first time and you just come in with your savings right so like yeah. i'm an entrepreneur so initially i just came with my savings as such uh, so it was a bit stretch in the beginning but once i started earning in pounds uh, it was like okay and that's when i started <laughs> get, getting involved with the communities various communities activities and it's always happening i think the city never sleeps like something or the other and i just came by, by myself like i had nobody in london so uh, mm-hmm. but i don't feel like that I'm I'm not home home sick so uh it's uh, it's great yeah <laughs> I mean it's one Yeah it's great that you feel like in a community maybe many people who migrate they usually feel lonely and uh I'm happy that you didn't have this feeling you Okay thank you very much Akhil for uh this uh, very interesting story of how to get a global talent visa in 9 weeks <laughs> wow Uh okay thank you very much